Hello, I'm George Gerges, a PM on the Azure Event Grid team, and today I'll talk to you about the new MQTT broker functionality in Event Grid. This new functionality enables your clients to communicate over MQTT. Some of the main capabilities include support for MQTT v311 and v5 based on the MQTT specs and support for custom topics. These capabilities enable your clients to communicate with our service using any standard MQTT client without the need to change your implementation or your topic structure. The service uses the PubSub messaging model that enables one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one messaging patterns. It offers a flexible and fine-grained access control model and enables you to route your data from your clients to Azure services or even custom endpoints. This will enable you to leverage your messages for data analysis, storage, or visualization, among other use cases. Finally, it supports the industry standard for device authentication, X509 certificates. Let's go through a sample use case together here. In this use case, I have a couple of vehicles publishing their locations, and there are mapping clients that need to subscribe to these messages to keep track of where each vehicle is. I also want to send the location data to a Power BI dashboard to visualize the locations of each vehicle. Now, let's see in action how we can achieve this through the new MQTT support. In this demo, I'll showcase the configuration of a Vingrid namespace, pops up communication between MQTT clients, and finally, routing of MQTT messages through Stream Analytics to a Power BI dashboard. Over here, I have the event grid namespace that I have pre-configured. In the overview page, we'll see the MQTT host name that all my clients need to send the messages to. The first resource that I have configured here was the CS certificates. Over here, I uploaded the certificate that was used to sign all my client certificates. In the clients page here, you'll see that I created a couple of clients for my vehicles that will publish their telemetry and a couple of clients for the backend mapping clients that will subscribe to the same data. If I look at one of my vehicle clients over here, you'll find that I specified the name that the client will present to the service for authentication. I also specified where in the client certificate should the service look for a match. In this case, it's the subject. Here, I also specify the client attribute for this client, just the key value pair here that describes all my vehicle clients and will be used later for grouping. In the same way, I created the mapping clients and gave them here a different attribute with a different value that will be used to group all the mapping clients. Here, I created a client group for my vehicles that groups my vehicles dynamically through this query based on the client attributes. And I created another one grouping all the mapping clients. Next, I'll go to configure the topics that the MQTT clients will communicate over. I created this first topic space for my vehicle clients to be able to publish their location. In the topic template here, you'll see the use of the variable authentication name. This variable will provide the fine-grained access control as it will only allow a vehicle to publish to its own topic that includes its own authentication name. In the same way, I created a topic space for the mapping clients to listen to the same data. Here, you'll see the use of the plus wildcard instead of the variable to match any value since I want my mapping clients to listen to all the vehicles, not just a specific one. Finally here, I'll assign permissions through permission bindings. I created here two permission bindings. The first one is for the vehicles to be able to publish. And then the second one for the mapping clients to be able to subscribe to the same data. Next, for the routing configuration, I have specified the event grid topic where all my MQTT messages will be routed to. Now that we looked at the namespace configuration, let's take a look at the data flow. I have all my clients modeled here in MQTTX, my vehicles, and the mapping clients. After they all got connected, the mapping clients subscribe to this topic filter. 
which enabled them to receive all the location messages that the vehicles have been sending already. Each vehicle is using its own topic that includes its own authentication name. Now let's see the last one in action. Vehicle 5 will also use its own topic that includes its own authentication name to send its message. And you'll see here that both of my mapping clients were able to receive this message as well. To look at the routing flow, let's go to the topic that I have configured to receive all my MQTT messages. Here I have created an event grid subscription on the topic that sends all its messages to this event hubs instance. If I go to process data with Azure Stream Analytics, I used one of these no code experiences to create this simple flow that gets my messages from event hubs to a Power BI dashboard in just a couple of clicks. If I go to my dashboard, I can see here the table with the entries based on the messages that my vehicles have been sending. Here you'll see the namespace name that is shared across all of the clients, the topic that each of them used, and the payload that each of them sent that includes their location. This map is also synced with the table. You can use it to highlight the location of any of the vehicles. Or you can use the table to get you exactly where a vehicle is. As you can see, we were able to configure the namespace to enable flexible pop-sub communication between clients, as well as route my MQTT messages through Stream Analytics to a Power BI dashboard. Thanks for watching.